thank you all for coming. And if you're not here, you're probably watching this on YouTube. So today we're just going to be going over like a few things. When you're leaving high school, it's like kind of tense. You probably don't know which direction you want to go. So today I'm just going to give you guys like a few little resources, give you guys a bunch of options, and then we can go from there. So leaving high school is really scary. We're supposed to be 18, 17 years old trying to figure out what we're supposed to do for the rest of our lives. Who made that rule? That's pretty crazy. But the thing about leaving high school is that you get so many options and so many opportunities at your fingertips that you get to see everything. So here are a few things that you might see. You might be considering going to community college, going to a four-year university, going to a trade or vocational school, maybe joining the military if you want to, or even taking a gap year just to figure out like what you want to do. And during that gap year, might even join the workforce or even do a bunch of volunteer opportunities. Or if you want to be like my dad, you can become a priest, go to seminary. He says it's cool. So community college. Essentially what community college is, it's a two-year program in which you can take general education courses, which essentially are just a bunch of prerequisite classes that are kind of similar to the classes you take in high school, but are just giving you more of a foundation for classes you could be taking at a four-year college. Um, community colleges are fun because classes are so much cheaper and you have a lot of flexibility in your schedule as well. And you can even stay close to home and save your money, which is fun. Um, and if you're in California and you're doing community college, you can also do something called a tag program, where if you take um, certain classes on a certain list and you get over a 3.0 GPA, you can be guaranteed to go to any UC you want. I think that's really cool. You can be guaranteed to go to one of the top research schools in the country. And there's a bunch of different types of degrees that you can get while being at community college. And just here's a list of a few. Now, a four-year, what everybody is super stressed about all the time. And everybody's always talking about it. And everybody's always trying to get into like the top school, trying to figure out what they want to do. But essentially a four-year is what you make out of it. You can go to a four-year that has not a lot of people, you can go to a four-year that has a lot of people, but it's all about the work you put into it and everything else around it. And the great thing about going to a four-year university is that you get to specialize in any topic you want. And basically, if you wanted to pick a career from it, and if you don't want to pick a career from it, that's fine too. Also, you can get a lot of internship experience and get hands-on work with different people. You can do research. And there's a lot of extracurricular activities you can do. And a lot of colleges have a club called OCF, which is Orthodox Christian Fellowship. If you want to stay close to the Orthodox roots and be friends with people who are like-minded. And you'll also have more access to higher paying jobs if you have a four-year degree as well. Now, there are two different types of four-year universities. There's private and public. And there's some pros and cons to each. So with private schools, you will have smaller classes um, and you will have closer connections with your faculty. And they really strive on your academic excellence since you are so close with everybody there because it's a smaller environment. And they do offer some financial aid packages. But some cons to go into a private are they are very expensive. Um, they don't really have as big of a diverse population and they don't have a lot of options in terms of picking a major. But at public schools, um, some pros to it is that they are more affordable than privates, um, and they do have a more diverse academic opportunities and diverse populations as well. Um, and they are pretty flexible in their schedules. Um, some cons to going to public schools is that they do tend to have larger classes. Um, usually at bigger schools, some classes even have 500 students. I'm in a class right now that has 600 students, which is pretty scary, but it could be fun if that's your thing. 
Um, and also another thing with public schools is that if you want the opportunities, you really have to put yourself out there because nobody's going to hold your hand and give it to you. Now, when it comes to trade and vocational schools, these are programs that give you hands-on experience um, and then you get a certification and then you will go into a job force. And that can be plumbing, electricians, being a medical assistant. There's so many opportunities um, and different things you can go into if you just research a little bit more. Um, vocational programs also prepare people for immediate entry into a field in just like a year or two so if you're not really thinking about like I don't really want to go to school for that long but I really want to get a job this might be an option for you so the military I know this isn't everybody's like thing it's probably like scary to think about um but the military is also a good option if you can't figure out exactly what you want to do and there's five branches of the military you could go into. There's the Army, Marine Corps, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Coast Guard. Um, and some benefits of going into the military is that you do get hands-on work experience, and they give you health care benefits as well. And if you do stay in the military for a certain amount of time, they will provide you a free four-year college degree, which is pretty nice. Um, another fun thing is that you do get to learn a trade skill while you're in the military as well. Um, and sometimes you get to travel. Might not be to the best places, but hey, you get to travel. Um, and then you also, you like work out sometimes. So you could get pretty fit if that's your thing. Now gap year. You might want to take a break from school. You've been going to school for 12 years. And who wants to make a decision right now? A gap year might be your thing. So one thing you can do in your gap year is just work. If you have a job in high school right now, or if you want to find a job, just keep working at it. And then if you want to see if you can get a promotion or try to see if you can find entry level jobs that you only need a high school diploma for, that's also another great option as well. Or you can just volunteer. You can volunteer at church. You can volunteer in the community. You can do so many things. Um, there's one program called Project Mexico where you can go build homes with Orthodox Christians. I think that's pretty cool. Now, my dad's a priest. Of course I have to say this. You know what I mean? Like I have to plug that in there. Some of you guys got to join the Father John army. I'm just kidding. But if you want to become a priest, there's an option for you. You can go to Hellenic College. But if you still wanna to go to the Hellenic College and you don't wanna become a priest, they also have undergrad degrees um, and different certificate programs. And in those classes, they do promote orthodoxy, which is something you might be interested in as well. And then here are just some of the options that they have in getting degrees there. Now, you have all this information. What are you gonna do with it? Well, this might be a little chaotic. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so I created like a little chart. You can start right here. Do you want to get a higher education? No, go this way. See if you can figure out what you want to do from over here. If you do, maybe go this way and try to figure out these things. Super, super fun. Now, for the people who want to go to college, because probably a majority of you guys are like, I want to go to college. There's like a little process that goes into college. Obviously, these are not all the steps. We can have like other time to talk about and go into depth about everything. But here are just some basic things to figure out how to apply for college. So first, figure out where you want to apply. You have to figure out if you even want to be at the school that you're going to be attending or getting into. You might not like it because they might be really hot over there or it might be really cold or maybe there's just too many people. Another fun resource, I just love resources, is this website. And you can basically find a college based on different aspects and that fit you. I use this when I was trying to figure out where I wanted to go to school. The second thing is filling out the FAFSA. 
So the FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. With this application, basically the government can give you grants or loans based on um, your parents' income. So talk to your parents about that, see if that's an option for you guys. Third step, fill out the application. So there's a lot of things that go into the application. So you have to fill out all of your personal information, you gotta fill out all your grades and all your extracurriculars and everything else. And that can be pretty time consuming. So you have to make sure you have everything together and ready to go to put it into the application website. And number four, if the application asks for it because some colleges do require it, ask your teachers for letters of recommendation. And when you do ask your teachers for a recommendation, make sure it's a teacher that actually likes you because that would probably help a little bit. It would also help if it, you had a close relationship with your teacher and also if you're a good student in the class as well. If you're a student that just goops off, I don't think your teacher would give you that good of a recommendation. So this is a plug of me saying, be a good student. And then writing out the application essays. Different schools have a little bit different application essays. And essentially they're just questions to try to get to know you better because yeah, they can see all your grades. They say, can see, wow, this person is so great. They're so smart, all these things. But what else? Because everybody else is smart. What makes you different? So when you're filling out these essays, make sure you're not doing a typical like cliche of, I had a really hard time in this class. After I studied the subject a little bit more, I persevered. How many times has everybody else around you struggled in a class and they persevered through it? That doesn't show anything. When you're trying to showcase the best version of yourself, you have to dig a little bit deep and try to be unique. And with that, that is the end of my presentation. I know it was really short, but hopefully you guys are able to grasp all the information I have given you. And obviously if you have questions, ask. But yeah, thanks guys.